starts at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey, we begin with some late breaking news. San Antonio police say one person is dead after an accident on the city's far west side. That accident happening just after 630 this morning in the 4100 block of Loop 1604, just south of Highway 151. That's where we find our Katrina Weber live. So what can you tell us, Katrina? Well, good morning. It's a man in his 30s who was killed driving a pickup. Now, we still have police here. They're taking measurements and also uh, they've been wrapping up their investigation. They've been here for a couple of hours now. I want to give you a look at the video so you can see a little bit better what happened. According to police, uh, the man in the pickup was heading down this access road uh, at a pretty high rate of speed. They say that the 18 wheeler, the big rig, was stopped there with its hazard lights on, with its blinkers on. And for some reason, the man in the pickup apparently didn't see it or was distracted, according to police. He ran right into the back of the big rig, his truck becoming lodged underneath it. Uh, they say that driver also was not wearing a seat belt. He was dead by the time police were able to get to him. They say that uh, it does not appear that the big rig driver did anything wrong. He did have his blinkers on. And so they're they're saying that this possibly was a case of that pickup driver being distracted and that is where they are now but again they've been here for several hours uh, taking measurements and also investigating just to make sure that they know exactly what happened reporting live on the far west side Katrina Weber case at 12 news Katrina thank you for the update let's take a look at your rundown U.S. now leads the world in the number of coronavirus cases overtaking China. And it's not just a crisis in New York. Cases are surging in Los Angeles and from Louisiana, where a 17-year-old has died. 5,000 U.S. sailors are on lockdown as coronavirus spreads through one of America's largest warships. We are in the process now of testing 100% of the crew of that ship. The pandemic also has San Antonio facing a blow economically. The city budget is facing a potential revenue shortfall of more than 110 million dollars. The city staff is also saying that San Antonio is projected to hit 12 to 14 percent unemployment this month. One food bank in Orlando, Florida says the daily request for meals has nearly doubled. They're now sending out 180,000 per day. Schools are closed and families can't rely on school lunches. Even games of chance are struggling due to the coronavirus. The group that oversees the Powerball says that the next jackpot is won. The next jackpot will be set to 20 million dollars. That's half the usual starting point of 40. Backyard chicken growers brooding over the pandemic situation are rushing to get their hands on chicken since eggs are scarce in some places. If you are new to the process, it takes about six months for hens to begin laying eggs. A group of friends in Maryland kept their social distance by holding onto a rope. It keeps them exactly six feet apart. Police officers make sure truckers are well fed as they help keep stores stocked amid the coronavirus pandemic. Lubbock police posted these photos to social media. Shows Lubbock officers passing out meals to truckers at a travel center. This hairstylist came up with a way to practice social distancing and still cut hair. Yep, she carved arm and eye holes into an umbrella she and she went to work. That's 90-year-old Miss Geneva Wood. I beat the coronavirus. I have a lot to live for. And God gave me the strength to do it. We all have a lot oh, to live for, don't we? Absolutely. And I love those little happy nuggets of news. Now, back to the one who's actually cutting the hair. I'm not sure I'm trusting my hairdresser. Becky, if you're watching, I love you. But I don't know if she's got all that stuff on or how accurate that cut's going to be. It's funny that you mentioned this because one of the things that's trending right now online is apparently quarantine haircut fails. Oh, and really? And there's some bad ones out there. Yeah. We might need to look into that as a talker for Monday. Monday. It's very, very possible. Hey, before we move on, today's our, you and I have been together a long time. Yes. That is this newscast third birthday today. Happy birthday to GMSA at nine. And Ellie, I know you're watching. I call her the mom. She kind of birthed the whole show three years ago. She, she did. came up with the whole thing. It was a rough delivery, but we made it happen. I know. <laughs> we continue to struggle and get put in time out a lot. <laughs> oh, I, I do. Uh, let's talk about some creative ways that local restaurants are staying open during the pandemic. This is and great you may stuff. have heard about some of these, but we want to go over some of these. This article is on KSAT.com, by the way. I absolutely love this. For instance, margarita kits, a bottle of tequila, margarita mix and limes. Some places are bundling it together, like Sancho's at 628 Jackson Street.
They've announced the sale of their emergency margarita to-go kits. God bless the margarita <laughs> kits. Uh, mixing drinks by the gallon, places like Pluckers and Sangria on the Berg are making their signature drinks by the gallon and adding them to the to-go menu. And we reported on this, but just a reminder, reminder rather, turning restaurants into small markets. La Gloria at the Pearl and the Fruteria have completely changed things up. They're making essential goods markets instead. You can buy milk, eggs, and even toilet paper. And then Going the, right after this. Yep, and then the family <laughs> meal packs. A lot of places are doing this. If you have a large family to feed, no problem. Places like Alamo Biscuit Company putting together menus that feeds large families. I also mentioned the other day Don Strange of Texas was one of them, but a number of restaurants are putting together these, these really great meal kits. And that's a, a good idea. There's also one place giving a free car wash with your meal. As your meal is being prepared at E Tipico Mexican Restaurant, your car gets washed for free. So we talked about the family meals at places like Don Strange. Then there's the meal kit service. Cookhouse has launched a new meal kit service. They'll prepare the kits with the necessary ingredients, step-by-step -step instructions for you to cook your meal at home. What makes this better is every meal kit bought, one will go to an industry worker impacted by the pandemic. It's fantastic. Again, you can find this at KSAT.com. And don't forget, the restaurants are struggling too, so it's nice to help them out. Let's go outside with live cam as we've got a cold front due in the area. Has it passed through yet, Justin? No, it's not expected until tomorrow morning. So okay. We've got some time before it gets here, but hey, I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's sticky, it's warm out there. We could use a little bit of a change. We'll get it tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, temperatures are still in the 70s, 72 degrees at the airport. We didn't fall much this morning. Uh, just all that humidity in the air allowed temperatures to stay uh, pretty warm. 64 Rock Springs, 69 right now in Uvalde. Not really dealing with much in the way of fog. We'll see those clouds today. Some sun this afternoon. That should push temperatures up to 87 for a high, at least here in San Antonio. We'll see some warmer numbers down to the south and east. Uh, let's take a look at the pollen count. That is in, and it is not good news. Oak is in a very high category. It went even higher than what we had yesterday. Kind of hard to believe. 29,650. Man, uh, mold is moderate. Pecan, mulberry, hackberry, pine on the low category. Forecast for today. 77 noontime, we'll call it mostly cloudy, but partly cloudy this afternoon. 87 for that high temperature. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And the weekend forecast, chance of rain early tomorrow, but it clears out tomorrow afternoon. And temperatures pretty comfortable both Saturday and Sunday. Guys? Thank you very much, Justin. There's 151 at Loop 410. No problems to report out in that area. There's 90 at Medio Creek. We're going to keep an eye on the roads for you throughout the hour. We mentioned that fatality accident far west side. Other top stories we're following for you today right here at KSAT. San Antonio police are looking for an elderly man who could be in danger. They issued a silver alert for 79-year-old James Estrada earlier this morning. So take a good look at this picture, everybody. Police say Estrada is about 5'11". He weighs 200 pounds. He has gray hair and brown eyes. He was last seen in the 3500 block of Bunyan Street. He was wearing a white t-shirt and light khaki pants. Lisa Estrada has a tattoo with the name Jim on his right ankle. Maybe driving a 2007 uh, GMC Sierra white in color. If you have any information on his whereabouts, please call SAPD 210-207-7660. As the coronavirus pandemic takes a devastating toll on the U.S. economy and the health care system, Washington is about to deliver an unprecedented legislation to help both people and businesses. Now, the House is set to vote at some point in that $2.2 trillion coronavirus aid package this morning. The vote, uh, or actually the debate, began about an hour ago. This is a live look at the House floor. The stimulus passed the Senate Wednesday with a vote of 96 to nothing. It is expected to also pass in the House. They're saying today, sending the bill to President Donald Trump's desk. The relief can hardly come soon enough. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said Thursday the economy may well be in a recession already. This, of course, is a developing story. We'll bring you updates online and on air as soon as things become available. Well, it's breaking news on the early edition of GMS 8 9. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has tested positive for the coronavirus. He was tested for COVID-19 after he began to show mild symptoms of a fever and cough. In a video posted on Twitter, the 55-year-old Prime Minister said, quote, I am working from home. I am self-isolating. And that's entirely the right thing to do, end quote. The Prime Minister says without a doubt, thanks to modern technology, he will be able to lead the United Kingdom to fight against the coronavirus. And back here at home, Cabal County is reporting the first death from COVID-19. Health officials say the man in his 40s from Braunfels died in an Austin area hospital. He was being treated. Meanwhile, Bear County has now reported a total of five deaths 
And among the 526 people tested, uh, people tested rather, 113 are positive for COVID-19. Well, you can see in this graph here that the cases across the country are growing exponentially. This is one of the reasons health experts recommend you stay home and work safe. That's the order that was given by both the city and the county. Dozens of animals need your help during the pandemic. As of earlier this week, Animal Care Services has closed its public intake of animals and is in dire need of fosters for dogs, cats, kittens, even puppies. KSAT 12's Alicia Beretta live from San Antonio's Animal Care Services with more how, how you can sign up to foster. Oh, there's Aww. a cute pup right there, Alicia. I want y'all to see this. This is Danny. Danny I.E. Oh, oh my gosh. Daisy is Daisy. crazy. She's so excited. Okay, well, we'll show you his eyes later on, but they're beautiful. There's these like beautiful blue white eyes and he's available for fostering or adoption. He needs a home with me live. I have um, part of the um, uh, education group personnel here, Claudia. Claudia, good morning. Good morning. We're obviously in the middle of COVID-19, so people are maybe a little bit hesitant to come in, but y'all are taking steps in order to keep people healthy and then these dogs to get a home. Yes, so right now we are open by appointment only. So we're asking families to visit saacs.info-services to sign up for an appointment, come in, meet the pets that we have available for adoption and for foster like Danny and like Daisy. And the good thing is that this foster program, what it allows is uh, free. It's completely yes. free and they get some pretty cool services. We'll talk about those. Of course. So our program, uh, our foster program <laughs> is completely free. So what we're asking is for families to come in, make an appointment, um, choose a dog like Danny or Daisy, whatever their uh, family wants, right? Do they want a lazy dog like uh, Danny? Like Danny do over they, here. Yeah. Danny. Do they want an active puppy like Daisy? <laughs> whatever their need is and what they can focus on, um, they can come in. We'll provide them with the food that they need, whatever materials they need to take care of the dogs, like the kennel, it's okay. the, uh, the bowls that they need, some toys, and they get to take them yeah. Oh, you hear Daisy. She's excited. Yeah, she's, she's pulling a little excited. bit. She's excited. Danny, again, big couch potato. We'll be sticking <laughs> around here at Animal Care Services San Antonio with Claudia, Daisy, and Danny. Again, they're looking for a home. Back to you guys. Oh, what a wonderful way to help out an animal, a little furry friend, but also give you somebody to help you get through this time at home. Alicia, thank you. We're going to stay with this yes. theme. If you can't foster, there is another way to help out animals in need in our community right here in South Central Texas. Our KSAC Community Partners and the Animal Defense League of Texas are hosting a KSAC Community Animal Defense League 100 Facebook Fundraising Challenge. That's a mouthful. Yeah. The COVID-19 pandemic has drastically impacted the ADL's fundraising efforts. So the organization is asking people to leverage their friends and family to help raise donations for helpless animals in need. You can do that by creating your own Facebook fundraiser based on a personal story maybe of how an animal has changed your life. The competition starts today, ends on May 1st. You can find more information on the KSAT community page at ksat.com. Friday morning, so glad you're with us here on KSAT 12, 9, 10, 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. As we head into the weekend, more artists are coming out with online concerts for fans. When and where you can watch today's lineup. San Antonio Zoo giving you an inside look at what's going on behind the gate and let you explore the grounds from the comforts of your couch. Eric Hernandez has details coming up later in this newscast. And the coronavirus pandemic has affected several industries across the world. And here in San Antonio, one of the most affected is tourism. RJ Marquez explains what it means for the Alamo City coming up next. Well, as the House has taken up debate on the stimulus package, a, a, a historic package right now, the market is down. It's down quite a bit. 770 points at 21,782 now. Welcome back. It is now exactly 915. The coronavirus, coronavirus rather pandemic has devastated several industries across the world and here in San Antonio. One of the hardest hit locally is the city's travel and tourism industry. The historic Crockett Hotel is closing its doors indefinitely as a result, and it's not alone. From a nearly empty river walk to empty hotel rooms and convention center, the city is expected to suffer losses in the millions. It is heartbreaking. RJ Marquez takes a look at the numbers. <laughs> 
The numbers are pretty staggering across the board when it comes to our travel and tourism industries. I spoke to Richard Oliver with Visit San Antonio, a public-private partnership that promotes tourism and conventions in the Alamo City. He broke down what some of the overall impact has been so far. Oliver said 16 citywide conferences had been canceled and three were postponed or rescheduled since the pandemic swept across the area. That's led to an overall estimated economic loss of $57 million through the 2020 fiscal year. Some of the key cancellations include the Craft Brewers Conference and Brew Expo America, which was projected to bring in $8.7 million. The UIL shutting down the Boy State Tournament in the Alamo Dome also affected the numbers. San Antonio hotels have felt the ripple effect. Oliver said Visit San Antonio estimates the hotel industry has lost 97,000 room stays and a projected 87,400 conference attendees. Deputy City Manager Maria Villa Gomez said Thursday during a council meeting that many hotels have closed amid reports of occupancy rates under 10%. The impact for the hotel occupancy tax is expected to be anywhere from 29 to $44 million. Keep in mind, these numbers do not take into account hotels and meetings not contracted with Visit San Antonio. Antonio. Popular business and tourist destinations such as the JW Marriott, Westin, and Grand Hyatt have also been greatly impacted. Possible job losses have not been taken into account either. Our travel and tourism industry supports more than 140,000 jobs. The numbers are bleak, but Visit San Antonio says there is hope that by the summer the tourism industry will recover. The organization's president, Cassandra Mate, says there are some positive signs and the convention market has remained stable for the month of July so far. Mate is confident that San Antonio's hospitality and tourism industries will be major drivers when our economy begins to recover. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch Case at News at 9, Monday through Friday. And it will recover I one day. We just so many unknowns other, right now. I can't wait to be on the other side of this. Yeah. Looking back saying, wow, we got through it, everybody. We did, and we will. And we will. Let's All check right. on the, that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's bring Justin into it. You <laughs> yeah. asked our viewers, the younger yeah. ones, to be a meteorologist for a day and to do their own forecast, and you got one. Yes, we thought it would be fun since they're at home. And this is sort of science related. Get some junior meteorologists to present the forecast. Sure. And we got one today. This is Melane. Take a listen. This is Melane Anderson, meteorologist in training from Bradley Middle School. This weekend's forecast is a little muggy. 20% chance of rain all weekend. Saturday is partly cloudy with a high of 79 and a low of 52. Sunday is also partly cloudy with a high of 79 and a low of 63. Reporting from Northeast San Antonio, this is Melane Anderson. Back to you, Justin. Is that like archive Love video? Archive video, Sarah Spivey, or is that an actual I mean, new, like actual separate little girl? <laughs> She's well on her way. <laughs> I know it's somebody else. I know, but she was good. <laughs> she was really good. Very impressed. I, I was too, and we, we love the videos. If you, if you want to send one in, we'd love to see it. You can email it to me, put it on Facebook, and uh, we'd love to share it with everyone else. So Very Blaine, poised for her age. Yes. yes, she was. Very and, well done. And we want you to send it in too, because it makes all of us smile. and. It we need does, to smile. Especially in times like these. And a quick shout out to uh, Dom, our editor. He put some of the graphics behind her. It looks great. Thank you, Dom. Yes. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the temperature extremes across the country. Yesterday, it got up to 108 in Zapata. That's uh, down south around uh, Falcon Lake down there. And the uh, cold temperature this morning, Peter Sinks, Utah, got down to negative 30. So the temperature difference, 138, that's pretty impressive from the low to high. I don't know that it will be that hot today in South Texas, but we could get more temperatures at least close to the triple digits down there around Laredo. We're not really expecting that here uh, in our neck of the woods, but we did get up to 100 yesterday in Catula, 103 in Laredo. So some big time temperatures yesterday afternoon, maybe a little more cloud cover today, and that'll bring temperatures down just a hair. Time lapse shows that we've had cloudy skies, a little bit of haze, but not much in the way of fog. Visibility still pretty good right there, 72 degrees. Two point is at 67 south southeasterly winds at about 11 miles per hour. This winds could be a little bit gusty from time to time today, by the way. Satellite picture shows those clouds. Uh, there are some breaks here and there, though, and so don't be surprised if you see a peak, peak of sun even this morning. 72 right now at the airport, 71 Randolph, 70 in Stinson, and we are seeing a few breaks down there around Pleasanton as well. A southern part of the viewing area looks like we're seeing some sun uh, south and west of town. And uh, we'll see partly cloudy skies this afternoon. Already seeing some pretty warm temperatures where the sun is shining. 79 in Victoria, 74 right now 
in Kennedy. And the forecast high temperature today, we'll call for 87 here in town, but you'll see some mid 90s down there around Carrizo Springs and Katua, typical warm spots. Uh, as far as the humidity is concerned, uh, it is going to be very humid today, but tomorrow behind the frontal battery, it drops off. We'll see dew points in the 30s and 40s. That'll feel great, especially in the evening time. And then humidity comes back on Monday, and that brings our next chance for rain. So as we look at the big picture here, high pressure is sliding away. Here comes our next storm system. This is the one that will bring the front through. Behind that, we have yet another area of low pressure that will bring some more rain chances on Monday. So a couple chances here, and the future cast shows that we'll see partly cloudy skies this afternoon. And then uh, tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock, front starts to move through. We'll get just a few showers with this. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of rain. Anything we see is going to be probably light. There could be one or two uh, rumbles of thunder mixed in there. And then uh, as we get into the afternoon, things clear out here and we see that drier air move in. High temperatures today up around 87 degrees. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then coming up tomorrow, 81. So a little cooler behind the front, 79 on Sunday. By the afternoon, you'll start to notice a few uh, more clouds. And then by Monday, we've got a 40% chance of rain, 78 degrees. 82 Tuesday, 80 on Wednesday, and more clouds on Thursday with a high of 76. Guys. Justin, thank you. 921, 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, musicians continue to live stream their concerts for the world to enjoy amid the crisis that we're in. A preview of three concerts that you can watch from the comfort of your own home. As we head to break, let's take a look at some pictures of healthcare workers around San Antonio. This is the MRI department over at Methodist Hospital. And this is Mayra, an ER nurse. Thank you so much for all of your hard work during this very difficult time. To submit a picture of a healthcare worker in your life, just go to ksat.com and search for Community Gallery. I'm going to try this, okay? All right, let's try this. What do Vanessa Carlton, Catherine McPhee, and a Swedish pirate folk rock band have in common? Thank you. Live streaming concerts to entertain us during the quarantine. CNN's Rick Damagella has the latest. This record is coming out on Friday. It's called Love is an Art, and it is probably the medicine that you need to get through this pandemic. Singer-songwriter Vanessa Carlton wraps up a week of performances Friday with a streaming concert celebrating the release of her sixth studio album, Love is an Art. Catch Carlton on her Instagram at 6 p.m. Eastern. Hi, I'm Dave. You might know my songs. Husband and wife duo David Foster and Catherine McPhee are entertaining audiences and themselves while self-isolating. The Fosters continue their Instagram streaming performances Friday night at 8.30 Eastern. Ye banished privateers are braving the coronavirus storm. The pirate folk rock group had an album release concert planned for Saturday, but since a pandemic is worse than scurvy, the privateers are making port in their hometown of Umia, Sweden, where 14 of their crew members will live stream the show. Aim your cannons, a web browser, at yebanishedprivateers.com at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Flying the Jolly Roger in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. What the heck? What the heck was that one pirate eating? I it looked know. like it looked like like raw marijuana or something. It was I the weirdest know. thing. And I didn't even know there was a Swedish pirate folk rock band. But there, now we do. There is. And their music video was awesome. And they love to make meatballs. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Sponsored by IKEA. 927 <laughs> right now, 72 degrees. Lots more ahead on GMSA at 9. The Georgia Aquarium closed for two-legged oh. visitors, but no one said anything about four-legged ones. A look at all the fun these puppies had throughout the empty halls. Safety restrictions have shut down the doors, or shut the doors rather, many nursing homes across our country. So people have been coming up with more creative ways to entertain seniors. How a group of singers in Kansas City is making seniors happy from a distance. And here at home, a group of students at Holy Cross High School are staying connected in a unique and fun way. Erica Hernandez gives us a look at their Pass the Toilet Paper video coming up next. Oh gosh. Welcome back, it is now 9.30. Holy Cross High School students get creative while at home and how you can explore the zoo from home. Those stories plus the latest update from the Census Bureau trending on ksat.com this morning. Erica Hernandez joining us live from her casa with more details. Good morning, Erica. Hi Good there. to see your smiling face. Guys, good morning. So question, have you guys filled out your census yet? Yes. We no, oh. but it's sitting unopened on my countertop and I will be doing it because you gave me that look right there and I'm going yeah. to do uh -huh. it this weekend. Exactly. How about you? 
Uh, yes, I have. So it's actually still okay if you have it. No worries, you still have time. In fact, the U.S. Census Bureau is saying right now is a good time to fill it out while at home during the coronavirus pandemic. As of Monday, though, only 21.6% of citizens had completed their questionnaire. And so far here in Bear County, 18.2% have responded. You can respond online, by phone, or by mail. Being counted is extremely important, especially for funding, which can help city governments, your child's education, and your health. I know as far as funding, too, some of that funding from 10 years ago, I'm sure, is being used right now um, in, with city governments using it to help right now their you know, their cities and their communities get through this um, this pandemic. Absolutely. I, you know, um, it was funny. I didn't really do it for the census thing. Tony did, but I was like, he's been home for working from home. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you did it already? He goes, yeah. It's like, easy, was not a big deal. Go online, just get it done. Well, yeah, you yeah, can knock out like several. Yeah, it takes five minutes to get it done. Yeah. yeah, so go ahead and knock out the taxes if you can, yeah. knock out the yep. census, a couple other things, you know, make sure the easy kids work. are on track with their, their homeschooling or online distance learning kind of thing. <laughs> yes. Yep. I think everybody's glad it's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But also while you're at home, did you know you could explore the San Antonio Zoo from your couch? I did not. The San Antonio Zoo is giving you an inside look at what's going on behind the gate. We have videos up on this article right now, hundreds of baby seahorses, a tortoise that's estimated to be more than 100 years old, and you can even visit with Timothy the hippo. You can explore even more videos by visiting the zoo's Facebook page. And right now the zoo needs a lot of help. I know they had to furlough some employees because they're having to close down. So if you also want to make a donation to the zoo, I think you could do that through their website as well. That would be a nice thing to do if people can do it. All right. So what's going on over our Holy Cross, Erica? Yeah, well, I don't know if you guys have seen this video yet on social media. It came actually to me um, from a Holy Cross, I think, parent. Um, high school students are staying connected with the Pass the Toilet Paper video. Students work together in their separate homes to create this. The video features students tossing, catching, and even squatting rolls of toilet paper and then passing it to the next person. Holy Cross of San Antonio tells us the challenge was shared amongst several students in a way to have a little fun during this downtime when they really can't be seeing each other right now. So this was really cool and creative on their end to put this together. I think a parent also helped them edit the whole video together. So that was really awesome to see. Another way to make us all smile. Yep. We need those. Exactly. All right, Erica Hernandez live from Erica's house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You guys have a good weekend. Hey, you too. Thank you. Thanks. Let's take you outside with live cam. Talk about your forecast for the weekend. The wash your car forecast. Hold off. Yeah, I would wait probably until next week. And as we look here at Life Cam, it looks like we're seeing a little bit of sun shining through. Certainly possible. We're going to see some clouds this morning and then some sun this afternoon. Uh, let's first start with a look at the temperatures. We're in the 70s right now here in San Antonio. 72 degrees at the airport. 70 Stinson, 71 Rio Medina. It's a warm morning. And uh, we've got the cloud cover, but there are some breaks already starting to show up, especially as you get it south and east of town around Nixon, Floresville. Sun is peeking through, and uh, that promises uh, to bring some warmth this afternoon. We'll be right back in the upper 80s, close to 90. But here's what we have working for us. As you look out to the west, you start to see some rain and snow. That's an approaching upper level storm system. It's going to help to bring a frontal battery through as we get into tomorrow, and that will bring changes. Uh, some cooler temperatures, some drier air, maybe a couple of uh, showers and storms along with that too tomorrow morning. 87 degrees, the high temperature southerly winds 5 to 15. It will be a bit breezy today. We'll talk about those changes for your weekend and what we have in store next week too. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. On one of the Transguy cameras a short time ago, I looks like they finally are now allowing traffic past that uh, deadly accident from earlier on the far west side. This is the camera located at 1604 and Weissman. So we're out there in the 151 area, but looks like one lane of traffic is now able to get past there onto the frontage load road headed towards the main lanes. All right, something else to make you smile, everybody. Check this out. All humans are home. Puppies will play. The Atlanta Humane Society. Oh, I can't read this. I'm going to watch. No, it took. they took some of the adoptable pups to have fun at Georgia Aquarium. It's closed to two-legged visitors or the outbreak. So a perfect chance for these fur babies to check out all the marine life. The puppies watched as fish and sharks swam above them, although they did seem a little more interested in playing with each other at times. Not surprising, they're puppies. Oh, speaking of puppies and dogs, since you're spending so much time oh, already, so why not help foster a dog in need? You can also foster cats, kittens, and puppies. Alicia Badara is live from Animal Care Services with more on the rising need for fosters during COVID-19. Hey there. 
Good morning. Well, you guys, earlier I showed you Daisy and Danny with an IE. We have since found out Danny is a girl, not a boy. <laughs> and just look at these eyes. Danny is looking for a home, and yes. so is Daisy. Daisy, we talked about her being a little bit more hyper. Claudia, how would you describe Danny? Danny, well, same. <laughs> she's still a cash potato. That hasn't changed, but she's definitely a cuddler. She loves to just be with you, probably just hang out on your lap. She loves the cuddles. She's a very, very sweet girl. Um, Daisy here, she's also very sweet, but she's much more active. So if you have a big yard, she would be great to play around with the kiddos. Um, while her here, she probably loves to sleep until like 11 a.m., you know, get a late start to her day. My weekend type of gal. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there, things are changing here, how offices, uh, how services are offered, but yes. there's still, well, there's still a green light to go. Yes, we're still open. So what we're asking is for people to just sign up by appointment to come adopt, to come foster, or any other of our services. We're asking people to uh, visit saacs.info-services, and there you can sign up for an appointment throughout the day and throughout this week. And um, until further notice, we'll just ask people to sign up by appointment and you can get uh, more information about our foster program as well. Like we said earlier, our foster program is free. Yeah, so, a lot um, of free services. Yes, for yes. Food, yes, it'll kennel, be included with leash, food. All the stuff you need, we're just asking for your time and your love. And since we're showing you these two beautiful girls, they were actually found together and they've only been here for a few days, but they actually already went through play groups, so they're mm -hmm. good around other dogs. And again, you can just see them here. They're just so, they're so sweet. I've been sticking by Danny over here. I think the eyes are what have convinced me. But on your screen, we should have that website for you um, on how you can sign up to foster. There's a huge need. They have received a lot of um, applications to foster, but still more are needed because girls and boys in there um, still need a lot, a lot of love during this <laughs> COVID-19 self-quarantine time. Claudia, thank you so much. Of course, thank you. Mark Leslie, back to you. Tough okay. assignment today, Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. And I was writing down that website. Uh, we showed it on the screen, but mm -hmm. I want to mention it real quick. It's saacs.info slash foster. All right. So everybody now is having to do the Zoom or virtual schooling, right? Right. And including Including students at that other UT. Yeah, the UT that we don't like as much, but we like it today because oh, it's, it's a good story. It's a fine school. <laughs> University of Tennessee. <laughs> no, I'm just... I, getting I, I know you're just playing. Yeah, I'm just um, a little biased there because my daughter graduated from UT Austin. But anyway, some of the students have been complaining that it's just boring. It's, Classes, and they're like, oh, really? Yeah. Again today? Right. So they got a really special surprise at one class. Yeah, you may have heard of a football player named Peyton Manning. Yeah, I've well, heard of him before. Yeah, he crashed his former professor's communications 499 class, surprising the students and doing his part to lift their spirits. John Haas, I think it's Haas. Haas, yeah. Yeah, he's one of Manning's favorite professors when he was quarterback in school. So he decided to surprise him. And <laughs> he set up Manning, it was a whole setup thing. And he walks in with a baseball hat on and gets reprimanded by the professor for being late That's to right. the Zoom class. He said, I'm sorry, Dr. Haas, it's been a while. It's been at least since, uh, oh, 1997, 1996, since I've been in class. So he tried to keep a straight face and he quipped, well, if you were here, I'd be making you run the stadium steps for being late, drawing a hearty chuckle from the two-time Super Bowl champion quarterback. And then Manning offered the uh, fellow Tennessee students some advice. This time they have figured out just who this mystery student is, popped in late for class. Some of their expressions were absolutely priceless. I real This is what he said to the kids to yeah. lift him up. I realize this is probably not the ideal way you guys expected to spend your senior year but I encourage you to keep a positive attitude. That's right, and he goes, be thankful for what you have, and just know the University of Tennessee is proud of you and going to support you in every way they can, and Dr. Haas and his department are going to do the same thing. And real quick, one of the, when they realized who it was, they're all like, oh my gosh, the faces, the expressions on their faces were hilarious. One of the female students, who was starstruck, gasped and said, I didn't even put on makeup this morning. <laughs> for her, for her <laughs> online classes. Yeah. Well, she didn't expect Peyton Manning right. to show up. Yeah. Great guy, great guy. Funny guy, too. Yeah. 940 right now, 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, making seniors smile from a distance. That's the goal of a group of singers in Kansas City. How the Corona Leers came to be, coming up next. Let's check on the market right now, oh. and uh, it's another awful day. Uh, right now, we're down over 900 points, down over 4% at 21,620, rather 630, 640. I can't keep up. Nope, keeps moving.
944 safety restrictions have closed the doors of many nursing homes across our country. But when one Kansas City woman couldn't get inside to see her own mom, she decided to do something to make her smile from a safe distance. The idea quickly caught on. Emily Rittman with KCTV in Missouri introduces us to the Corona Leers, bringing music to those staying home. Good morning. <laughs> We're starting with the standard. You are my sunshine. Uh, I'm doing all right, but some are not. And uh, this is just really a wonderful, wonderful a break of the day. The voices of these spread out singers drifted from balcony to balcony. They originally came to visit Carol Upton. You know, it's a special day right now. Yeah. yeah. These are kids that my son grew up with. Soon, Carol's neighbors joined in, even brought their own instruments. It just breaks up the monotony of the isolation. One by one, smiling faces came out from behind doors to their balconies for their own concert from a distance, of course. Carol's downstairs neighbors approved. Well, I know these two. <laughs> they love life and yeah, they're wonderful. When we get there, they're like, they're confused about what's going on and then their faces just light up and they start singing along. Tammy Johnson asked her high school friends to join her on this happiness tour. They came with me to sing to my mom and all of her friends and all the balconies were out. That's how it started. It just became this sharing of love. To go out and do music for people was a no-brainer. We're literally serenading them and that um, they, they enjoy the music. We ask for requests. Copyright laws prevent us from sharing their upbeat Beatles, Elvis, and Johnny Cash covers. But as you can see, the crowd loved them. The song God Bless America moved them. The joy and the smiles, that's, that is why we do it. So there's no other reason. Obviously, we're not... Uh, great, but we love it. <laughs> the group doesn't just visit senior living facilities around the metro. They also made a house call to visit the parents of one of their childhood friends. I don't see a lot of people. The only time I get out is when I go to the doctor. But um, this has been refreshing. Mark Boyer's copyrighted song request encouraged his wife to cut a rug. No, I don't get around. In fact, for me to do that is amazing. We haven't done that for years. Oh, <laughs> another feel good story. That was KCTV's Emily Rittman reporting from Kansas City. Let's check on weather right now. We know weather changes are still on the way. Justin, you've been talking about it all week long, and it sounds like some of these temperatures are going to be pretty refreshing. Yeah, they, they will drop off quite a bit. You know, we are starting to get in April here, so things are warming up, but any drop in temperatures is, is nice, and we'll see a drop in humidity too, and that really plays a big role in, in how it feels out there. Uh, let's first start with the drought monitor. We got this in yesterday, and yes, much of the area, or at least some of the area, is still in an extreme drought down there around the Winter Garden. Uvalde, Carrizo Springs over towards Catula. But I can tell you this is actually an improvement. We're starting to see this come back just a little bit. We've had a couple of rain events. We've got a couple more in the forecast, so we'll keep chipping away at this drought. We're not seeing too much here in Bear County, and as you get into the hill country, we're doing just fine, but it's generally south of San Antonio where we have the issues. And you look at the state of Texas, it is really just South Texas. 20% uh, of the state is in drought. And a week ago it was 22%. So there is some improvement there. We had a couple showers actually this morning up across the hill country, very light stuff. Uh, but just an indication we're starting to get a little bit of lift coming in here from our next storm system. Still not close enough yet, uh, but it will be by tomorrow and it, it'll help to bring a front through and that will bring our chance for rain. Live cam blowing around a little bit. Winds are starting to get breezy out there out of the uh, south and southeast and that's ushering in a ton of moisture. Dew points are in the upper 60s now, so very, very sticky. Temperatures at 72 and we've got cloudy skies. You can see the clouds here on our satellite picture. Uh, cloudy for most of Bear County. Now as you get south, of the county. We are starting to see some peaks of sun there. 73 Port SA, 72 San Antonio, 75 New Braunfels, 70 right now in Seguin and down to the south where there is some more sun. Temperatures now jumping up to 76 in Kennedy, 74 right now in Gonzales and uh, closing in on 80 down there in Corpus. So it does uh, promise to be another warm day here across the area. 
We're looking in on wind gusts too. They're picking up quite a bit. 22 mile per hour wind gusts last hour uh, in Gonzales. We're seeing that around Rock Springs and it will probably pick up a little bit here in San Antonio. We could see some gusts up around 20 miles per hour today. And as we look at the dew points, very high as we showed you, but there is some relief on the way. So that frontal battery gets uh, close to us by tomorrow morning, seven o'clock. It's starting to move in. There is the drier air. Dew points in the 20s. That is dry desert air from West Texas. That works in by midday behind the front, and it will really feel nice by tomorrow afternoon. There is the storm system that we're watching. It's already generating quite a bit of rain and snow there across the desert southwest, and then we have one right behind that. This is going to bring us some rain chances on Monday. And uh, here's the future casts as we go forward in time here. Clouds pretty much erode this afternoon. I still think we'll get some high clouds, so it won't be perfectly sunny. Uh, but by tomorrow, here comes our frontal boundary. This is around 8 o'clock. It's moving closer to San Antonio. This model does not generate much rain here in town. Picks it up a little bit as you move east of Bear County, and we could see a couple of showers and storms there, but still the rain chance is only about 20%, and not everybody will get rain. Uh, as we get into the afternoon, that drier air funnels in, and we get to clear out. Saturday evening should be really nice. Sunday's pretty nice too, but we'll see an increase in cloud cover. 87 degrees today. Southerly winds 5 to 15. Tomorrow, 81 behind the front. 79 on Sunday. We start off at 51, by the way. A little chilly. Some 40s in the hill country. 78 Monday with a chance of some showers and storms. And then pretty nice next week. 82 and mostly sunny on Tuesday. Guys. Nine fifty four British healthcare workers got a round of applause yesterday from some of the youngest members of the royal family. A video on Kensington Palace's official Instagram page shows Prince William and Kate Middleton's children clapping for them. Aw. The cheers from Prince Louis, Prince Charlotte, and Prince George are all part of a bigger social media campaign called Clap for Careers. Careers. Or carers. Carers. For carers. people who care for other people. Clap for carers. Yeah, clap for carers. Okay, together, this is a story. Um, the first time, those kids are growing up fast. Hey, back here at home, we want to thank all you healthcare workers on the front lines. Let's look at some of the pictures of them around San Antonio. This is Maria. She is a surgical intensive care unit nurse. Oh, thank you so much. And this is, I think it's Lori, a VA nurse. Thank you so much for all of your hard work during this difficult time. And of course, you can submit. Yeah, a picture. Laura. Right it's there. Laura. It was just wrong on thing. It's mm. Laura. There you go, Laura. You can submit the picture of a healthcare worker in your life at ksat.com. Search for community gallery. All right. Uh, let's see. A Texas man apparently modeling 2020 quarantine fashions in a hilarious viral Twitter post. Once again, people are getting very creative on how to pass the time. This is our I don't Eli even know Elias Araga. Araga. That's what he said. Araga. Araga. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Araga. He has more than 40,000 views on Friday morning. Totally went, uh, went volatile all over the place. Qu quarantine showcase for my outfits. I'll be rocking at home for lockdown 2020 is what he called it. It features so. Mr. Araga <laughs> modeling a variety of loungewear <laughs> and athleisure ensembles accessorized with snappy surgical gloves. Quote, so he doesn't bring no Rona home, end quote. Get that. <clears throat> Welcome to the quarantine runway show. Look at him, ready to go, because he, you know, did the audio over the whole thing, too. Did his own narration. Fun stuff. It was really fun. So <laughs> Be safe. Have a wonderful weekend, laughed. everybody.